one. So let's go back and add some convection off the back side of this board. We'll do a vertical board here, a heated board, and you'll get an updraft there and you'll get some natural convection off the back of that. So let's go and add convection uh, to, to an ambient temperature off of a 2D surface. And we're just going to say convection off back of plate. So we're going to go to the plate, and we can either do it top or bottom. It just depends on how the icon is showing. You'll get the same answer because we have no nodes through the thickness here. This is just a one, a two-dimensional plate. But uh, we're going to use a coefficient of five, uh, natural coefficient here, uh, which is uh, natural convection off of a vertical plate. That's a similar number to what we would get if we had calculated it. And check it. And we're going to go to 20 degree uh, air temperature and then application region we're going to pick this plate and this plate plate surface one and surface two and so now you can see off the back of it we have convection uh, with a coefficient of five off the back and we can uh, at uh, these loads by plotting markers we can just look at the con so now you can see the convection off the back of the plate and then we're going to um, just rerun this now. Read in my new results. And we'll come over to our result menu here and we'll look at result number two. Let's look at our first results first. And we can see the temperature, the max temperature was 220 degrees and the coldest was 20 degrees. So that box got up to 220 degrees in the plate below it. And now when we added convection off the back, that should have dropped that, and it did. Now we're down to 74 degrees. Now here we just guessed at what the convection coefficient, and there's a lot of equations in heat transfer books, and we have about 40 of those built into our convection library. And it's actually quite easy to use. We have internal uh, force convection, um, external force convection, uh, transitional laminar turbulent, and natural convection. So let's take this correlation number 701, which is a vertical plate, and the only information we have to give it is the fluid properties and a characteristic dimension, which is one meter in the vertical direction. And it will do all the math of calculating the Rayleigh number, using Prandtl number and things to get a new salt number and then calculate an H from the new salt number. But we have to tell it what material and instead of typing in all the constants for the material I'm just going to pick one in these units. We're still in SI units so it will bring it out of our material library and if I look here I brought in this fluid material called air. If you notice the air I brought in was temperature dependent air so it actually brought in all these temperature dependent fields. Conductivity is a function of temperature, specific heat, density, viscosity, and expansion coefficient. All, all a function of temperature. And then uh, we're going to go and preview and let's see about what number we're going to get for this convection coefficient. And since this is natural convection, the coefficient is delta T dependent. So let's say if the wall um, was running, before it was running about 220, so but now the wall is running about 75. So let's say the wall is running 75 degrees um, and the air temperature is 20 degrees. And some of the wall is actually much colder than that. But if we pick those two, then the H is going to be about 5.4. But if the wall was more like this uh, temperature here, maybe only 23 or 24 degrees, we'll say 25 degrees, then that H value drops down to 2.58. So that H value is, is very dependent upon the, the location. So now we're going to create this, this uh, correlation and we're going to call it natural convection vertical plate. So I'll give it a, a name and uh, hit apply and that will actually create that correlation. Now off the back of this plate 
I'm going to go edit my load. And this was convection off the back of the plate, and we had a constant value of 5. Let's now, we're changing this to picking a material, and this material we created, natural convection vertical plate, it's like the air material uh, flowing over the back of that plate with an updraft. And so um, when we're going to use that for our correlation, which is really that, that complicated Neusalt Rayleigh Prandtl number formula that will vary depending on the delta T between the surface and, and the air will vary so you have a higher H here than you will in those corners. So we just say OK and we apply to overwrite our old load and now this new load instead of having a constant value all over the plate whether it's hot or cold we have this correlation. So let's see what that does to our temperature. Um, let's go and run it again. We'll access our results. We'll look at this next set. Instead of 70, the high of 74.8, now the high is 76.4. So a little bit different answer, and you can see the patterns changed a little bit on the board between a constant H and using this convection correlation formula. And that was all. Uh, all automatically computed for us. Now if we would look in our SENDA model, and if I add an output routine to my SENDA output, and I'm going to add this, this routine right here called con ad Advanced Convection, CNV out. Put a checkbox there. And now when I run again, it's going to, in my output of Cinda, it's going to dump out for every element what the delta T is. In this case, the delta T is 19 degrees, and the H value was 3.8. If we find a place where the delta T is, is higher than that, uh, here the delta T is 20 degrees, so the value is 4. So depending on, on where it is on the plate uh, and what the delta T is, uh, here the delta T is 17 degrees and it's 3.7. So you can see the H value is changing uh, at every little element on the back here depending on the temperature gradient between the plate and the air temperature. The final thing I'm going to show is under our loads we have something called load set. So if I want to rerun this model with maybe uh, some load removed, I can create maybe a load case called no convection. So maybe I want to run this with no convection um, and I'm going to create I'm going to take and add everything all my loads except convection off back of the plate. I'm going to remove that one. There's box power here. Let's remove the box power. So I have no convection and I have no box power. So no convection or power. Now, when I go to my Analyze menu and I go and run, It just ran, and let's read in our results. So we have our fourth result set here. And now you can see the box has the thermal mass there, so it is affecting the plate a little bit because there's some thermal mass of that box, and the box is actually tied down to the plate. Um, and you can see the gradients we have from 20 to 1. 100 and you see the gradients uh, even though the meshes don't line up the gradients are quite smooth as you go across any little bending is due to that box and we could go into our load case again and edit this and say let's take off that box contact to just totally disconnect 
the box from the model. Apply, and overwrite it, and, and now if we rerun the box it won't be affecting the plate. So you can set up, oops, I said access results, let's analyze. And then we'll access results. Cinda has a little process uh, boxes that pop up showing you how it's moving through the process, but these run so fast you don't have time to even look at that. So now you can see we have nice uniform gradient because the box is no longer affecting us. It's actually isolated from the model because we're not using that contact. So you can set up load cases with high power and low power and uh, have one model, many loads, and just pick the loads for one load case, pick the loads for another load case, and run. And you can, when you run, you can give them different uh, job names and it will create different Cinda models. Um, now let's run this as a transient model and we're going to run it output every 60 seconds and let's run it for 3600 seconds or one hour. We'll do maybe 1800 seconds, 30 minutes. And I'll pick uh, my Dufort Frankel method. And let's go back to our load case and go back to our default which has all the loads in it. So now our default says make current the default and let's run a transient. And we can read in our results. Now when we look in our results we have all the time steps so we can look at maybe 900 seconds and see what the temperatures are come out to 1800 seconds and see what they are and we can do animations also but one of the best ways to look at results are with XY plots and I'm going to bring the model into Thermal Studio which is um, a Windows GUI for Cinda models to manage Cinda models run them and I'm going to run this model again and it's running for 1800 seconds and it produces a result file here and this result file I'm going to create a plot called temps and I'll pick a couple nodes that are on on the plates and then a node here, a high node number that's on the box and you can see uh, the higher node number here the box is going up more slowly uh, the plates are coming up more quickly we're not at steady state yet, things are still rising so we could just come into our Cinda model and just change that time in constant um, in our constants block, let's just change that to uh, maybe uh, two hours, 7200 seconds, and save my model. And now when I rerun the model, it'll run longer. And because it's going to update the results for that model, then the plots will also automatically get updated. So now it's running out to 7200 seconds and I had to auto scale because it went further and now you can see um, the box still isn't up to steady state temperatures yet but the, the plates have become close to steady state the hot, this hotter plate isn't uh, we'd have to run it longer to actually get out to where the steady state temperatures were so this shows how you can do plots and you can uh, change these plots you can edit create multiple plots, you can do reports, tabular reports uh, in Thermal Studio, you can turn off the symbols if you don't like symbols and you can even change names and call this like box and, g and give names to your different uh, curves and, and copy these plots and paste them into PowerPoint.